In this short video, we're going to look at the composition of uh, linear transformations uh, between general vector spaces. Now, there's really nothing special about uh, compositions between uh, general vector spaces. They are still just functions, and whether they're functions between Euclidean spaces or elementary functions that we studied in elementary algebra, uh, we can form their composition uh, the only stipulation is, as always, the codomain of T1 should be the same as T2, because we're chaining these together. When we say T2 composed with T1, what we mean is that we're going to take a vector from the domain of T1, put it into T1, T1 will do something with it, and we'll get an output vector, T1 of V, we could call that vector u, or we could just call it t1 of v. And then since u is the domain of t2, u has to be the domain of t2, then it's defined. We can go ahead and find t2 of t1 of v. And then we get some output in the codomain of t2. But in order for this to be defined, then the output from t1 has to be a valid input for T2. And so um, we can say that the composition is also a linear transformation. The domain of the composition is the domain of the first linear transformation. The codomain is the codomain from the second linear transformation. And even though we write this as T2 composed with T1, just as always, we're going to actually first apply t1, get its output, use that as input to t2. And that's exactly what we're saying here. We uh, put something into t1. It gives me a vector u, which is output. It belongs to the u space. That is a valid input to t2. Then we evaluate t2 of u. And so in other words, t2 composed with t1 is just t2 of t1 of v. In other words, it is the image of t1 of v under the transformation t2. So let's look at an example. I've got uh, two uh, transformations. The first one goes from p2 into p3. So the domain is p2, the codomain is t p3. The second linear transformation has as its domain P3, and its codomain is a Euclidean space, R3. And here are the definitions. And um, to help clarify the different components here in T2, I just use different colors. And so notice that the composition T2 composed with T1 is defined. Remember, we're going to do T1 first, so its output is in P3. That is the input to T2, and so that composition will be defined. However, if I go the other direction, if I take T1 composed with T2, well, I'll do T2 first, and that'll give me an, as output a vector in R3. Well, that's not a valid input to T1. So this composition is not defined. I can't compose T1 with itself because the output from T1 is a polynomial in P3, but the only valid inputs to T1 are P, polynomials in P2. And the same idea with T2 composed with itself. Its output is a Euclidean vector in R3, uh, but it needs as input a polynomial, so there's no, no chance at all there. So those uh, other compositions are not defined. And so we'd like to find a formula for the composition T2 composed with T1. So we just take a generic input polynomial to T1 and then use the formula for T1. And just go back here to remind ourselves what the formula is. So let me go ahead and put that on the clipboard. And Move this over, make it a little smaller. We don't need it that big. And put that on the clipboard. And so 
just so that we can refer to this. All right, so again, the, the formula for T1 is just take the input polyno polynomial and multiply it by 2x plus 3. That's what we did here in order to get our output. We're calling the output from T1 Q of x. And then any input, uh, in order to find the output from T2, I need to evaluate that polynomial at negative 3. It's derivative at 2, and it's second derivative at negative 1. So I'll need to calculate or find a formula for the first and second derivative of q of x. Now I don't know what p of x is, so I'm going to have in these formulas, I'm going to have p of x or p prime of x or p double prime of x. And so um, when I take the uh, first derivative, I need to use the product rule. I get something in terms of p prime and p of x. And the second derivative, I go ahead and apply the product rule again, but only in the second term. Uh, then I get some like terms that I can collect, and it turns out that the second derivative only depends on the first and second derivatives of p of x, not on p of x directly. So now I can find formulas for my uh, components in the output of T2, or in the composition T2 composed with T1. Again, let's just keep this formula handy to help us. So the first component is q of negative 3. So I use the uh, formula that it came up with for q, which is just going to be 2x plus 3 times p. So it be 2x2 2 times negative 3 times p of negative 3. Uh, and then collect the, the like terms there. Uh, in q prime, maybe we can go ahead and put those on the clipboard as well to have the right reference. So let's go ahead and cut that. And let's get the formula for q prime as well. Put that over here. And then we'll go ahead and select that. Put that on the clipboard. Move it over here and uh, move it someplace where we can read it. Maybe make it a little smaller. Same thing with Q prime of X. Let's reduce the size a little bit. And so again, what was the first derivative? Evaluated at 2 would be 2 times P of 2, 2X plus 3 times P prime of 2. Well, x in this case is 2. And so that's how we get the expression for q prime of 2. And then q double prime of negative 1, we have to take 4 times p prime of 1, of negative 1, I'm sorry. Uh, and um, so this is a little mistake on my part. Sometimes you don't catch these things, no matter how many times you, you think of this. This should be p prime of negative 1, 4, p prime, evaluated at negative 1. Not p prime at x, but p prime at negative 1. So that is our formula then, corrected formula, for the composition uh, T2 composed with T1. Well, we'll come back to that formula. Hopefully, I've written it down correctly when we use it again. But if not, we'll make the correction. Uh, now we're going to look at two uh, linear operators. Actually, between infinite dimensional spaces, we're going to look at the uh, differentiation uh, transformation from the space of functions with a continuous first derivative on a closed interval. And the output from that will give us a continuous function. You can f always find the definite integral of a continuous function. And so we're going to go ahead and use our uh, indefinite integral uh, action here, or transformation. 
and uh, that will give us a function back in C1. So when I compose these two, I will get an operator. Now, if we actually work this out, uh, we have as a result from the fundamental theorem of calculus is that in a very real way that now we can say this uh, quite rigorously that the uh, that the derivative undoes the definite integral because if I start with a function and I first perform its indefinite integral then take the derivative of what I get from the indefinite integral I get the same function back again. So the order matters as we're going to see. Start with a function f of x, form the uh, indefinite integral, essentially uh, the antiderivative, then take the derivative, you get the exact same function back again. Which says to me that uh, this composition is an operator and is actually the identity operator, that the derivative undoes the indefinite integral. Whatever you put into that composition, you get the exact same thing back out, which tells me that when I operate on or compose the indefinite integral on the left with d, uh, I get the identity operator, which means that d is a left inverse of the indefinite integral. But what if we change the order? Instead of doing d composed with ind, if I do the indefinite integral composed with the derivative. And let's just do an example. We're going to do a polynomial, quadratic polynomial, x squared minus 5x plus 3. We'll use the uh, closed interval from 0 to 1. And so remember, the order here is that we're going to take the derivative first, and then we're going to form the indefinite integral of the, uh, of the derivative. So derivative, we just uh, use the power rule. Now we take the integral from 0 to x of uh, 2t minus 5. Remember, we change from x to t because we, have a, and we need a dummy integral, I mean a dummy variable of integration. And so that, after we do the evaluation, leaves us with x squared minus 5. We have lost the constant. We no longer have any, we just have plus 0 instead of plus 3. So we started with a polynomial. We took its derivative, then took the indefinite integral of that derivative. We did not get the same polynomial back. So we lost some information. So uh, we can no longer say that the composition is an identity operator. And this is very interesting because what that says is that though D is an left inverse of IND, so the derivative undoes the indefinite integral, but the indefinite integral does not undo the derivative. So d is not a right inverse for the indefinite integral. This is completely different, very different from what happened in Euclidean space. In Euclidean space, if we had a left inverse, it was also a right inverse. We are guaranteed. No way you could only have a left inverse without being a right inverse. Here we have an example that says that that's not always true with general vector spaces, certainly at least in the infinite dimensional case. All right, so we should be able to find the matrix of a composition with Euclidean spaces. We are able to find the matrix of a composition. If I did T2 composed with T1, I would just take the standard matrix of T2 and multiply it times the standard matrix of T1. And uh, we can do that as well. We just need to have uh, finite dimensional vector spaces. We need to have a basis for each of the three spaces. So remember, the domain of T1 is V. Its codomain is U, but that's also the domain of T2. We need that in order to have the composition defined. And then its codomain is W. So I need three bases. I'm going to have B 
uh, as a basis for the space V. B prime is a basis for the space U, and B double prime is a basis for W. So with that, I can form matrices for T1 and T2 with respect to those bases. And if I form their product, the resulting matrix is the matrix for the composition. Now, if T1 and T2 are operators on V, so T V equals U equals W, uh, then I could just take the uh, matrix for T1 with respect to the basis B and the matrix for T2 form their product. If T1 equals T2, so I'm just repeatedly applying the uh, same operator, and so that's self-composition. You're composing it with yourself. And note we do have for linear transformations this shorthand. We can use a superscript too, like an exponent, but it, the operation is not multiplication, it is composition. But that turns into multiplication of the matrices, or the matrix, the, the matrix for T. And you can, if you, instead of composing uh, two instances of T, if you had R instances of T composed together, then you would just take that matrix and raise it to the power of R. So let's go back to uh, our first example where we had T1 being a transformation from P2 into P3, and T2 being a transformation from P3 into R3. And using the same definitions, let's go ahead and find the, the corresponding matrices. We're going to use uh, the standard bases, so uh, ascending powers of x for both P2 and P3, and then our standard basis vectors for R3. So finding the uh, matrix for T1, remember, what do I have to do? Find the image vectors of 1, x, and x squared. The definition for T1 is just to take that input polynomial and multiply it times 2x plus 3. And so that's how I got my output polynomials. I need to find their coordinate vectors in the output space, which is P3. So those coordinate vectors, because P3 is a four-dimensional space, they're going to have four components. The first component is the constant coefficient. The uh, second component is the coefficient on x. The third component is the coefficient on x squared and the fourth component is the coefficient on x cubed. So I can go ahead and encode these polynomials and get their coordinate vectors corresponding to that basis. Those will then be the columns of the matrix for T1. Now for T2, it may be uh, worthwhile, let me just go back to uh, remind ourselves of this definition. So let me go ahead and put that on the clipboard. And get to the point where we're trying to find the matrix for T2. Now, we get a break here when we're looking at the matrix for T2 because the output space is already the Euclidean space R3. So there is no you know, encoding or decoding needed. It's already going to be a coordinate vector. And so um, when I look at, so I got to find the uh, output for all of my basis vectors, so 1, x, x squared, and x cubed, uh, using this formula. So I have to evaluate uh, 1, and when uh, it equal, the input is negative 3, well, it's always 1. 
its first and second derivative is zero, so that's why those two components are zero. The first derivative of x is the constant function one, so when I evaluate that at two, I still get the constant, the value one. Um, the, uh, when the input is negative three, of course, the output is also negative three. The second derivative is zero. For x squared, uh, when I put in negative 3, I get positive 9. Take its derivative, I get 2x. Evaluate that at x equals 2. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. And then uh, for the second derivative, it's the constant 2. So no matter what the input value is, the output value is 2. And then finally, for x cubed, uh, its value when x equals negative 3, that'll be negative 27. Take its derivative, I get 3x squared. Put in 2 for x, that'll give me 3 times 4, or 12. And then its second derivative is going to be 6x. Evaluate that when x equals negative 1, I get negative 6. So these are going to be the columns of the matrix for uh, T2. And now I have both matrices. So to find the matrix of the composition, I just take the matrix for T2 and multiply it times the matrix for uh, T1. And that product gives me a 3 by 3 matrix that you see here. Now let's just check. Let's go back and look at the formula. Here I wrote it correctly with 4 times P prime of negative 1. And let's go ahead and see if we go ahead and get the same columns. Uh, to help us, let's go ahead and put this matrix on the clipboard. So this is our formula. What would I do? I would look at the images of the basis for P2. So the image of the constant polynomial P of x equals 1, the power of x, P of x equals x, and P of x equals x squared. And so let's see what I get. Um, I use that formula. Again, remembering that um, the first derivative and the second derivative are 0, so I should get a 0 in the third component. And then I get 2 in the second component, negative 3 in the first component, using this formula directly, and that agrees with our first column. So that's great. Let's do the same thing. Let's apply the formula now uh, to the uh, next basis vector, which would be x. And let's see if we get the same thing. Again, using this uh, the formula, I am going to uh, take th 3 times negative 3. Then 2 times the derivative here is just going to be uh, 1. And then uh, the second derivative is 0, so I'm just going to take 4 times 1 here get 9, 11, 4, and that agrees with our second column, which is great. And then what about uh, the image of x squared? So let's go ahead. I do have a second derivative here. It's 2x, and evaluating that at negative 1, um, I get a uh, negative 2, so I have a typo here. Uh, that should say negative 2 here. And um, wait a minute, unless I've got something. No, the second derivative, that was not a typo. That's me getting confused right now. The second derivative is the constant 2. First derivative is 2x, second derivative is just 2, so that should be plus 2. And that makes sense because if I take 4 times the value of the first derivative when x equals negative 1, that gives me a negative 2. I get negative 8 plus 2, giving me negative 6, which is what I want. And then I see that 
the output using the formula directly matches the third column of our matrix that we got from the matrix product. And so uh, just like with uh, linear transformations on Euclidean space, if we have the composition of two linear transformations among finite dimensional vector space, we can find the matrix of the composition by finding the product of the matrices from the individual transformations, of course, in the correct order.